Today, we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. You are invited to a concert of Advent music and scriptures by our parish choirs here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church on Monday evening at 7 p.m. Father Greco, assisted by Deacon Paul, will lead us in our celebration of the Holy Mass. You can follow along with our hymns and readings through our bulletin beginning on page five. For those viewing on the internet, the bulletin can be found on our parish website. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken for. Make straight the way for God within, and let each heart prepare all where such a mighty guest may come. For you are our salvation, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without your grace we waste all flowers that wither and decay. To heal the sick, stretch out your hand and bid the fallen sinners stand. Shine forth and let your light restore earth's own true loveliness once more. All our freedom won with the Father we adore and Holy Spirit In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation 
and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord and the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. to save us Lord come to save us the Lord God keeps faith forever secures justice for the oppressed gives food to the hungry the Lord sets captives free Lord come to strangers. Lord, come to save us. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, who Zion, through all generations. Lord, come to save us. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take an As an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing. Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, if we hearken back to the first Sunday of Advent, the first Sunday of this season of penance and preparation, we can consider St. Paul's reminder that our salvation is closer than it was. Our salvation is closer now than it was when we accepted the faith. This is God Day Te Sunday. Rejoice Sunday. And so we rejoice in that message. We rejoice in the fact that on this particular Sunday, as we move rapidly closer to celebrating the anniversary of the birth of the Lord, the great feast of Christmas, we're reminded of the beautiful fruits that come from waiting patiently. Because in the midst of every day's serious concerns, the Lord is coming. And the reminder that the Lord is going to return can give great comfort to us in the midst of our difficulties. We rejoice, especially that our lack of Christian witness and action doesn't end the story for us. We rejoice that relationship with the Messiah is not a one-shot deal. If it was, many of us, including me, would have done, been done a long time ago. But our relationship with the Messiah is not a one-shot deal. If we mess up, there's opportunity to be renewed every time we fail to accomplish the objectives of faith. The prophet Isaiah, who has been guiding us every week so far, provides us with the beautiful images of the unlikely becoming possible. And the Apostle James, in the second reading, reminds us to be patient while that unlikely event is being prepared for us. The prophet envisions life coming from death. He envisions blossoms appearing in the dead of the desert. He envisions the physically impaired returning to the state of perfect creation which God intended. And the Apostle assures us that hope should not be diminished as we wait patiently, await patiently our harvest. Both of these men have high hopes. And why not? Why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't we have high hopes? We and any believing Christian, for that matter if our hope and our reason for rejoicing is Jesus himself. Every day we wait. And how hard is it for you to hear the scriptures say, wait patiently? No one is patient nowadays. It's getting worse. No one can be content waiting like they used to in the old days. And now that I'm 60, I can talk about the old days, the 70s. 1970s. We are not patient. We cannot wait. But what we're waiting for now, during this season, is worth the wait. 
It's worth the effort. It's worth the patience and the prayer that we put into it. Every day we wait. Some wait and are conscious of that wait. Others don't think about waiting for God and others will not wait. Some of us wait in happiness and contentment. Some of my people might think we're silly. We're waiting in happiness and contentment for the coming of the Lord. We're excited about it. We're comforted by it. And some wait in happiness and contentment, although realizing that total contentment can only be realized in the presence of God in heaven. This is not the world of contentment. It's the next life. And that gives great joy to many of us. Because one day when the Lord does call us, we look forward to that contentment all the time. Some among us are irritable. Imagine that. Some of us are irritable because we've, they've moved away from God. And when we are unhappy, folks, chances are very good that God doesn't figure well into the circumstance. There's a chasm that we place between us and God through our sinfulness. And when we become lukewarm in our relationship with God, we become cranky and irritable. If we're always keeping our faith foremost in our minds and always being attentive to the, to the presence of God, crankiness and irritability will be less. The truth is, friends, there's little rejoicing or Christian happiness when a life is lived without God's presence. And it's not because God's not there. Is God nowhere to be found in this circumstance? Not according to Isaiah, because Isaiah assures us with the words, be strong and fear not. Here is your God. He comes with recompense to save you. Well, this sounds as if it's worth the wait. And it sounds that it's like that it's not God who's the one who's abandoned the relationship. God is never away from us. We are the ones who are away from him. St. James reminds us in the second reading of the patience that we need. And he uses the example of the farmer because his listeners would have known about farmers. The farmer whose life is given to the land, to the planting, to the sowing, to the care and the harvesting of the fruits of the earth for the sustenance and support of his family realizes that for all of this to occur, he must make good effort toward it and he must wait. We all know that you put a seed in the ground today, it's not gonna come up with fruit tomorrow. Patience is required in the planting. So James uses that example to wait patiently for Christ to come. Christ has planted the seed. The seed is growing. The fruit is becoming obvious, but he has not yet returned. James goes so far as to using the word precious when he talks about what the farmer awaits. The farmer awaits the precious yield of the soil. If what we await, friends, is precious to us, it could be relatives coming to visit, it could be some kind of a prize that we're expecting to get. If something is precious to us, it is important to us, and something that might be necessary for our survival, something that cannot be substituted for, then it's worth a patient wait. And it's with joy, with great joy, that we anticipate its arrival. So it is with Jesus Christ in his second coming. Those who know him and love him will await him and live as if they do await him. And with joy-filled expectation, they will await him. Because he promised to come again and he will. There's no emptiness involved in any of Christ's words. What he brings is far greater to the people of faith. Real joy is to allow Jesus to possess us. Unhappiness is to lose him. And true joy can be forfeited when the goal of that happiness is not God. Our efforts are wasted if our objectives are worldly. Worldly efforts always have failure as a possibility. Efforts founded upon Christ with him as the goal never end in failure, as they will lead to the ultimate victory that he will share with us. Today we look above the impatience and the trials of waiting and we rejoice the celebration of the coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord into our individual lives is much closer than it was one minute ago. And if rejoicing is not our feeling, why not? Why are we depressive Christians then? Why do we not rejoice in the coming of the Lord at Christmas and rejoice that he's going to come again? 
Today we're reminded to get excited about God. Imagine Catholics getting excited about anything except bingo and festivals. <laughs> get excited about what happens in this space here. Get excited about God. How can we do that? No one can force anyone to be happy or to rejoice. The feeling has to be natural. It has to be desired. And you know what? It'll be natural and desired the more you practice the faith. The more often you hear the scriptures preached, the more often you receive the Eucharist, the more often you come into the church building to pray, you will get excited about God because you have relationship with him. He's part of your life and you're part of his. And even when you fail in being part of his life, he's still part of yours. To be able to rejoice in the Lord is also to be frustrated when those you proclaim him to lack your enthusiasm and your energy. John the Baptist and the Lord's prophets of old found that out. They were out there preaching the coming of the Messiah and some people were excited, others walked away. Others paid attention, others had more important things to do. You know, some of us Christians are very fruit-filled. We're fruitful. We receive the Eucharist, we hear the scriptures proclaimed, our lives are examples of that, they reflect that. Then there are those others, those others I call the dry and the dead. And I don't mean physically dead, spiritually. If we're dry, we used to have an interest in Christ and possibly still do, but we do little to improve on it. And if we're spiritually dead, there's no interest. There's no effort at all where God is concerned. And it's very difficult then to preach rejoicing in the coming of the Messiah when some of your listeners are dry and others are dead. Rejoicing in the Lord isn't a universal pastime for us. It should be. Maybe if we did it more often, we would desire it more often. And if we did it more often and desired it more often, our daily disappointments would be lessened and overshadowed by a greater disappointment of losing relationship with God and a greater happiness in his constant love and presence and his patience with us. You know, an excellent example of the Lord's patience with us and our happiness is the fruitfulness of our efforts to be Christian through the forgiveness of sins that he offers us, the reason that Christ came into this world. Throughout the coming two weeks coming, we'll be offering the Sacrament of Reconciliation this coming Wednesday. The light will be on for you from 6 to 7 at St. Margaret's, from 7 to 8 at St. Simon and Jude, and then the next day, Thursday, the daylight will be on for you here from 12.30 to 1.30 following the Mass. And then also the, the Saturdays, except for the coming Christmas Eve, which falls on a Saturday. Take advantage of the opportunity to be reconciled with Christ. If you're not dry and you're not dead spiritually, you're going to go to the Sacrament of Penance because you see the need for it. Because receiving the Sacrament of Penance keeps you from becoming dry. And it keeps you from becoming a dead spiritual person. Please take the advantage of these opportunities before you know, December 24th. You know, the lines may grow as the weeks progress, so come early or come late. And put that patience that St. James talks about into practice. But rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. The Lord is near for me, and he's near for you. He's near to me, and he's near to you. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prompted by the Holy Spirit and with confidence in the Father's love for each of us, we offer our prayers now in Jesus' name. That Christ may form church leaders into prophets and messengers to prepare his way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord, our judge, may bring vindication and divine recompense for the oppressed of our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Jesus may bless with joy and gladness all experiencing sorrow and mourning this holiday season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Eucharistic community may be granted the gifts of wisdom and fortitude, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord, according to his holy will, grants the intentions of our partners in prayer and those that each of us bring to Mass today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, remembering especially James Coyle and Regis Walsh, may enjoy eternal light, peace, and joy in the kingdom of heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mary Barras, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We'll end the universal prayers tonight with the blessing of the infant Jesus that you may have brought from home. So if you did bring the infant Jesus statue from your home, I'd ask you to come forward. Everyone else, please be seated. I should have brought all five of mine. But I can bless mine at home. And let us pray. God, our Father, you love man so much to send us your only son, Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, to save us and lead us back to you. We pray that with your blessing. These images of Jesus soon to come among us might be in our homes a sign of your presence and love. Good Father, give your blessing to us too, our families and friends. Open our hearts that we might know to receive Jesus in joy, always to do what he asks of us and see him in all those who need our love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your beloved son, who came to give peace to the world, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Bear the fruit 
above. Soon the Lord will come in power, burn and clean the threshing floor. Then will flames the chaff disarm, bright alone shall fill God's door. With such preaching stark and bold, John proclaims salvation near. So we dare to journey on, led by faith through ways untrod, till we come at last like John to behold the Lamb of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Raphael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Come, he goes home, be comfort to our hearts. For you, O Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly, my hope is in you. For you, O oh Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly, my hope is in you. O oh, key of knowledge, guide us in our pilgrimage. We ever seek, yet unfulfilled remain. Open to of your peace. For you, O oh Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly my hope is in you. Let us pray. 
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is in. Be to God. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Peace. 